Howdy! It's Go Texan Day here in Houston, and I would not pass up the opportunity to dress up uh, with my cowboy hat, which I absolutely love, but people give me the strangest looks when I wear it. Uh, so I get an excuse to wear it today. Um, so <laughs> figured I'd show you my getup. Um, but now that that's done, I'll go ahead and take it off <laughs> and give you an update um, on how things have been going. Um, I uh, saw Jesus in a dream recently, um, so that's something I want to come back to and share in just a moment. Uh, it's something that I've never seen before. Um, a lot of people who are leaving Islam uh, and become Christian do so because they see Jesus in a dream or a vision. And I did receive dreams and visions when I was seeking the truth about Christianity and Islam, but I never actually saw Jesus in a dream or a vision. Um, I saw things that led me to uh, the gospel. Uh, so uh, I was thrilled to have seen Jesus in a dream. I'd been praying for it. I'd been asking for guidance. And I think I got some, so I'll share that with you in just a moment. Uh, but quickly, a brief update about my health condition. Um, it has actually been pretty difficult the past few days. Um, since last week, uh, the inflammation, uh, which is caused by radiation, it's a normal side effect, uh, has been pretty difficult to handle. Um, and so I haven't been able to eat the foods that I've been wanting to eat. Um, I've been having to resort more and more to high protein shakes, um, to smoothies, uh, liquids basically, because I just can't eat uh, as much as I want to. Um, so if you could pray, please, that I would be able to make sure I get my calories. Praise God, I actually have kept up my calories. And so I haven't lost any weight, but um, if you could pray that I could actually eat during this time, and not have to resort to so many liquids. I would really appreciate that. Also, if you could pray that uh, the radiation would work. There's no actual test to see if the radiation is working. Um, we know theoretically that it works, but it doesn't have to work on everyone, and quite often it, it doesn't work for some people, and so they go through five weeks of radiation like I am, and only afterwards find out that none of it worked. Um, of course, we're praying for uh, maximum efficacy and, and, and minimum side effects. Um, so please do pray for that, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Um, the end goal, of course, for the doctors is to shrink the metastatic tumor, especially to the point where it's no longer visible, uh, it, actually to the point where it's entirely gone. Um, and once they do that, then they will feel comfortable taking out my stomach um, and parts of my esophagus, uh, because if the body is rid of all cancer, then there is a hope that I will survive. Um, if there is cancer in a metastatic site, there's no point to take out the stomach because the metastatic site will just uh, metastasize further and continue to grow. That's the thing about cancers. Even a single cell can replicate um, and ultimately uh, kill a person. Um, and so please pray that the radiation would destroy any last traces of the cancer, especially the metastatic site, um, but also of the primary tumor as well. Um, and in the stomach walls and the esoph esophagus walls. So that's an update for me. Um, just to summarize, quick prayer that I can eat and prayer that the radiation works. Um, <clears throat> now onto this uh, story about um, having seen Jesus in a dream. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I have felt at a loss for, for guidance and for direction on specific issues for the past few weeks, actually for the past couple months, um, kind of just sitting here and languishing, really. <laughs> um, uh, just praying every day, uh, reading scripture, memorizing scripture, um, having people visit me, uh, people praying over me, uh, me going to people's places and to churches to pray. Um, but as far as what do I do about the health situation, um, not many choices for one, but also not much direction. Um, and so uh, I've just been praying to God for direction, for guidance on what to do and how to move forward. And one thing that I really wanted to see was a dream or a vision of Jesus. I'd actually been asking for it because um, I wanted to hopefully be able to actually ask Jesus questions um, and, uh, and, and get his guidance. And so when I got this dream, um, it was something that I had been praying for. Uh, so. I know some people will throw that in the mix and say, oh, well, you were expecting it by faith, so Jesus appeared to you. Other people will take the exact same piece of data and say, oh, you wanted it so bad that your mind produced an image of Jesus for you. Take it however you will. Um, but I had been praying for 
uh, a vision or a dream of Jesus. And I got a dream. And in this dream, I'm sitting at a balcony uh, of some large indoor structure. Um, it could have been kind of like a mall. I don't think it was a mall. But if you've ever been to a mall where there's multiple levels and you can look down from a higher level into a lower level, like there's a mall here in Houston called the Galleria, um, and you can look down at an ice rink from a higher level, um, it was that kind of a balcony, a glass balcony, railing kind of thing. Um, and I was sitting there waiting for Jesus. I knew that I was about to meet him. And then Jesus appears to me. Um, and uh, I've always wondered what Jesus looks like. Whenever someone tells me that they had a vision or a dream of Jesus, I ask them what Jesus looked like. And of course, different people say different things. And so you can interpret that however you want to. For me, the way he appeared to me was striking, very striking. He wasn't glowing. Uh, some people say they see a lot of light. I didn't see a lot of light. Um, I saw a man in his young 30s, um, which, which was striking to me because um, whenever I see pictures of Jesus, if you look at paintings or if you, um, you know, look at uh, artist depictions, almost always, uh, subconsciously, I, I don't know why, but they depict him as a middle-aged man in his 40s. Um, but in my dream, I saw a man who was exactly my age, looked like my peers, um, uh, quite handsome, uh, on the lighter skin side, but not white, um, dark eyes, short hair, short beard, um, and he gave me, and he was wearing a, a white robe uh, with a green sash. Now, this, it, was a, it was a hunter forest green, a darker green, um, and the cloth kind of had embedded in it uh, like the texture, the shape of the texture. I don't know how to describe it, but um, it was kind of diamond patterned, um, the sash. Um, there weren't pictures of diamonds, but that was kind of the, the texture of the cloth. Um, and so when he comes to me, he gives me this huge hug. Um, I mean, it was just a big embracing hug. And I felt very loved, very, very loved in the dream. Um, and he sat down and he had a conversation with me. Now, unfortunately, I don't remember what we talked about, um, which is bothering me. I'm going to pray about that a bit, that if the Lord wants to, that he remind me what we talked about. Um, but one thing that I do remember, uh, I remember him saying the word baby, followed by the words sponge bath. Now, um, <laughs> not exactly what I was expecting to hear from Jesus baby and sponge bath. But those are the only things I remembered from the dream. And so when I woke up, uh, apart from, of course, the hug and what he looked like and where we were. Um, and so when I woke up, uh, I felt great. I felt, I felt very, very good. That hug s stuck with me for quite a while. And then I, I told Michelle the dream and I said, we are obligated to give our daughter a sponge bath. Uh, <laughs> that might not be Again, this dream may have been something that my head was producing, uh, but if I've been praying for a long time for guidance from Jesus and he appears to me in a dream and says, baby sponge bath, I'm gonna cover my bases and give my daughter a sponge bath. And so um, that night, so this was uh, Monday night um, or Tuesday night. No, 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 it was Monday night. Um, so that night we, uh, I, I bought a sponge from Target and I went to give her a sponge bath. Now, Aya loves baths, and she loves sponges. She loves playing with things that, you know, the water squeezes out, and she likes looking at the drops and imitating the sound that the drops make. But when I was giving her this, this sponge bath, as soon as she saw the sponge, she just started crying, almost hysterically, and asking me and my wife to pull her out of the, of the tub. She was saying, Mama, Mama, Baba, Baba, and she was just asking us to pick her up because she was terrified of the sponge. Um, now you have to understand, I'd been looking all forward all day to giving her the sponge bath and I'd been praying about it. Um, and this was not what I was expecting at all. But she was just absolutely terrified. Ultimately to the point where she stood up in the tub and walked to the edge of the tub and stared at the wall. Uh, so she, she, if the tub, if the wall is right here, she's staring at the wall and looking over her shoulder and just terrified and crying, staring at the sponge. And I'm thinking, what, what are you so afraid of? Uh, you know, it's, it's me, it's your mama, um, I'm holding the sponge, it's okay, we're just gonna give you a quick little bath. Um, why are you scared? But she was just crying um, and asking us to, to pick her up. 
And more or less symbolically, as much as I could, I washed her back, um, I washed her head with the sponge. I didn't want to torture her too much though. And so it wasn't, it wasn't that in-depth of a wash. And then I handed her off to Michelle and um, put the sponge down and I said, I need to go pray about this. And so I went to our prayer room and the moment I walked into the room and started praying, it struck me that this may have been almost like a prophetic act um, that we see in scripture. Um, we, we often see uh, prophetic acts in scripture, and it struck me that this may have been one. Um, now, just give me the benefit of the doubt, and let's say Jesus told me to give Aya a sponge bath. Um, when I go to cleanse her, she is so terrified of the sponge that she's, she doesn't let me cleanse her, even though I, her father, am holding the sponge. Um, she's just terrified, and she's asking to be rescued so much so that I can't actually cleanse her the way I wanted to. I began to think if this wasn't an image that God was showing me um, of what's going on in my life, where God is my father and he has been cleansing me and he has been, or at least he wants to cleanse me through this, through this cancer, this illness. Now I'm not saying it was God's will for me to have this cancer or illness, but I am saying that if you have an illness, you can glorify God through it. You can be cleansed through it. You can learn from it and you can become a better person by it and give God the glory through it. Um, so what I'm saying is, you know, here is this opportunity for cleansing and for me to glorify God. Um, but I'm so terrified of, of this illness, even though it's held in my father's hand that I'm not letting him do the cleansing work. I'm just asking him to rescue me and to take me out of the situation. So much so that the work that can be done, uh, I'm not letting it happen. I wondered if that was an image that God was giving me. Um, it stuck powerfully with me. Um, and just to give you an example, I was talking with my one of my mentors, um, Dr. Tour, um, James Tour here in Houston, Texas. And I mentioned the account to him, and he said, oh yeah, I mean, prophetic acts happen quite a bit in Scripture, such as, you know, in Acts chapter 10, instead of Peter just being told, hey, feel free to preach to the Gentiles, he's given this image of a sheep descending from heaven and being told to kill and eat, and he's given this image three times, and then that image is coupled with a personal encounter with Cornelius at his house, and only then, after he gets this vivid image and this encounter with the real life person, does he put two and two together and say, my goodness, it's God's intention to save all of mankind, um, uh, as in Jews and Gentiles alike. And so he says, you know, this sounds like something God would do. Uh, Nabil, he gives you a vision and a dream that you remember that means a lot to you, but at the same time, he couples it with a very real encounter with your daughter um, that leaves an indelible mark on you as well. Um, so that was, that was interesting. So this past week, I've resolved then not to be a slave to fear, not to pray so fervently for healing out of fear. Now, that doesn't mean I can't pray for healing. I should. Um, but I shouldn't be afraid. I shouldn't be motivated by fear. And I think I was letting that happen to me. Um, this disease is in my father's hands. Uh, honestly, come what may, God is in control. I love my father and I trust him. Um, and he's holding the sponge. And if I'm sitting there crying my head off, asking to be rescued such that he can't do the work he wants to do, I'm not glorifying him. I'm not honoring him. And so I'm continuing to pray for healing uh, in faith. Uh, but I'm not letting that be motivated by fear. Um, and I am trusting God more, as much as I can. And saying to him, of course, your will be done and um, may you be glorified through this in me, uh, through me in this. So that's kind of where I am. That's what happened this past week. Um, yeah. It's, it's been a powerful week for me. Um, and uh, I'm trying to move forward a little bit more and just trusting and being expectant that God will move uh, but not being motivated by fear. And if you find yourself in this kind of a situation, um, I would encourage you to learn from what the Lord has taught me this week as well. Let's pray. God, thank you so much, so, so much 
for who you are. Thank you, Lord, that even in our weakness, you appear to us and you console us and that you comfort us. And God, your word says in the book of Hebrews that you have destroyed the power of death that Satan had, uh, Lord. And so death has no power over us. As 1 Corinthians 15 says, death has lost its sting. Uh, and so, Lord, may we not be afraid of anything, uh, but in everything um, that we trust in you, Lord. Um, and God, give us that self-control. Um, give, give us that spirit of power and love. Lord, help us overcome our fears, uh, even a fear of painful death, God. Um, we pray that we wouldn't be motivated by that, but that we would just put it at your altar, at your cross, and let you handle it, God. Thank you so, so much for answering my prayers and appearing to me. I pray that you would do it again, God. I loved seeing you. Um, and I pray for my brothers and sisters that they would have the opportunity to see you as well and to receive a big hug. Uh, God, I pray for everyone who's watching this and who intends to pray for me, um, that you would bless their prayers for me and for themselves, Lord. Uh, and the time that they've spent watching this vlog and praying for me, that you would return that time many fold over, Lord. Answer their unasked prayers. Uh, God, and heal, heal everyone who's watching this who needs healing. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm about to head out for dinner, so uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.